Newton Crouch Incorporated presents technical tips. Hey there, I'm Brian Mathis with T-Jet Technologies. All right, so this is a TAS 6300. The uh, three of 6300 means that I can run up to three different injection pumps. This truck has two truck two two injection pumps on it. That we can calibrate and use. Um, the console has an on-off and then we have an operate setup switch and an increase decrease switch and a display selector that has 12 positions on it but be mindful that it has 12 positions in the operate mode and 12 positions in the setup mode so it makes sense that before you operate the product we would want to set it up so you have to make sure you know what the position indicator is showing is a little white line here and so that's lining up with chemical applied but I usually like to start with this carrier side which is the main water so I'll rotate it over to application rate and application rate in the operate mode would be the application rate that you would want to target now on a lot of injection systems what we'll do is actually zero out this volume all the way to zero and then when we go back in the operate mode this flow control off auto actually just simply means that it's in the manual mode and we'll be able to increase and decrease the pressure by using this increase decrease switch if we wanted to target say 25 gallons to the acre we could actually enter in that value and it would automatically target 25 gallons to the acre regardless of our ground speed or our boom widths and that sort of thing so that would be if we wanted to target a value and if we wanted to get 25 we could enter in that value right you know just like this of course the longer you hold it the faster it gets but that would be a 25 gallon rate for the carrier of water going out of the nozzles On, in this scenario though what we will do is actually zero this all the way out and run it in the manual mode So if you have a zero rate in there, once you get to zero, hold it down for just a few more seconds. And when you go back to operate, it's in this manual mode, flow control off auto. Total applied would be how many gallons it has applied. But in the setup mode would be the calibration number for the flow meter. Now there's a number stamped on the flow meter of 299. What that means is it takes 299 pulses from the flow meter to register one gallon. So the, the measurement of gallons going out of the sprayer would not be accurate until we get this calibration number entered in there correctly. So we'll go to 299 and that'll make registering gallons more accurate. And that should be a very good starting number for the flow meter. On the widths, in the operate mode, when you're spraying, when you turn on the boom sections, it can tell you how wide the sprayer is applying in feet. But in the setup mode, we actually would enter each boom section value in inches. So what I'll show you here is with section one on it's 144 inches or 12 feet wide section two is 240 section three is 82 section four is 216 section five if we've just put in a foot in there six is 240 seven is 240 eight is just a foot in there also and nine's not being used um, 
the C width is actually a calibration width and I've got 40 feet in there just as a as a number for our calibration purposes okay our next position to set up would be the distance and this this is where our speed calibration number is entered so distance in the setup mode is a calibration number well our speed sensor is down here this is a GPS speed sensor by TJIT and it has an antenna on the roof and we know by looking at the user guide that it recommends a calibration number of 769 for this system so setup distance we're going to run this number down to 769 for an accurate reading of speed. In the operate mode, this would be a foot counter. And over here in speed, in the operate mode, would actually be our ground speed while traveling. Prime is an area where if you wanted to prime the product from the tank to the nozzles we could actually hold our increase and it would run our calibration valve uh, our regulating valve wide open and we would have just a, a, a pass through at that point decrease would actually close it and so prime is is how you would prime that that line if you needed to our next position on the dial is test speed. This is ideal for stationary tests. So for the rate controller to, to work, it needs a speed. Well, if you want to just park sitting still and do a stationary test, uh, you can put this value on a value that represents the speed that you would travel. In this case, it has 10 miles per hour as a default. Scan is just that. It'll scan through all the operator numbers like speed, acres applied, the volume that you're applying, how many gallons are, uh, have been applied, speed. So it just rotates around the screen conveniently for the operator. Speed in the operate mode is your ground speed while traveling. And setup is a ground speed override. And that would normally not be used but if you wanted to have a if you wanted to maintain a pressure and a flow even though you slowed down further for example let's say I put five miles per hour in here and I was slowing down from 10 9 8 7 6 5 it would control down to that speed but as I slowed down below that ground speed override it would maintain the output at whatever value I enter in here so it's on zero and we're gonna leave it at that area is just an acre counter and now we've made it back around to chemical applied this would be how many um, ounces have been applied by whichever pump is activated and in the setup mode would be the actual calibration number that we use to determine that volume. And it's always according to which pump you have activated. So there's not a pump three, but so in, in the pump one's case, our calibration number was 107.8. And the volume that we accumulated recently on a test was 49.5 ounces so that's the amount of chemical applied the chemical rate is where you would put in your application rate for pump one or pump two or pump three but notice this is a three position switch so I could have 64 ounces for pump one and I could actually change it to a different rate for uh, for an alternate rate so what if I had let's just say 80 ounces I would go to 80 ounces and then that would give me an alternate rate for example a boost rate should I need one so in the operate mode I can either have 
our standard rate of 64 ounces or on the go I could flip the switch up and it would go to an alternate rate so that's just for programming purposes percent rate is a boost rate uh, at a hundred percent I'm putting out the full volume if I wanted to um, increase or decrease that I could go to setup now I have it zeroed out so that we can't change it but let's say I did want a boost rate of 10 percent what that would allow me to do is while I'm spraying at a rate of 64 ounces to the acre for example if I on the go wanted to boost it one time I'm now putting out 10 percent more if I wanted to cut back the rate I'm now at 90 percent of 64 so that's an advanced feature a lot of times we will be asked to zero that out so in the operate mode you certainly would want that to say 100 percent but if you want to disarm that you could go to setup and just change that increment to zero and that way an, an operator could not accidentally change his operate value of 100 percent and that completes the rotation of the dial of 12 positions there here's our boom switch box you have a master and individual boom section switches on so notice the switches here correspond with what the console recognizes so this is a good indication that these switches are showing up on the console very good we're ready to spray technical assistance is available online 24 7 on our YouTube channel or our website newtoncrouch.com you can call us at 800-241-1350 Monday to Friday and speak with a real person no recorded messages our knowledgeable staff will be glad to assist you proudly Made in America, a family-owned business since 1940, Newton Crouch.